Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. The name's thyroid, hypothyroid. Okay, that was a terrible segue into this chapter on thyroid disease. Welp, some things you can't unhear. Sorry. This chapter will cover the various derangements that can affect that squishy little organ in your neck, the thyroid gland. All of the greatest hits will be reviewed. Hypo, hyper, we'll cover it all. By the end of this chapter, you'll never say thyroid again. Get it? Yeah, nailed it. This sketch will focus on the first of these thyroid derangements, hypothyroidism. And as you might have guessed from my amazing intro to this video, we are screening the latest installment in the adventures of everybody's favorite debonair secret agent. Hypothyroidism is a condition that most commonly results in decreased secretion of the thyroid hormones triiodothyronine, aka T3, and thyroxine, aka T4. Hypothyroidism can result from a defect anywhere in the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, but the vast majority of cases are primary, meaning they're caused by a disease within the thyroid gland itself. Hypothyroidism caused by a disease higher up on the HPT axis is known as central hypothyroidism. Central hypothyroidism can be caused by diseases affecting the anterior pituitary, aka secondary hypothyroidism, or hypothalamus, aka tertiary hypothyroidism. Secondary hypothyroidism is caused by disease within the anterior pituitary, which is responsible for secreting thyroid-stimulating hormone, aka TSH. To remind you that pituitary disease is the cause of secondary hypothyroidism, we've included our recurring sketchy symbol for pituitary dysfunction, the pituitary punching bag here on this poster. Tertiary hypothyroidism goes even higher up on the axis, resulting from diseases affecting the hypothalamus, which is responsible for secreting thyrotropin-releasing hormone, aka TRH. At Sketchy, hypothalamic dysfunction is represented by the torn HYPE press release poster advertising that boxing match. Sorry, guy, but hey, did you really expect a big response from posting a boxing ad in a hospital? Anywho, central hypothyroidism is a lot less common than primary hypothyroidism, making up only 1% of all cases of hypothyroidism overall. With that bit of introduction out of the way, let's get to the good stuff and take a look at the wide variety of clinical manifestations that patients with hypothyroidism can present with. Thyroid hormones regulate a lot of key physiological processes, including metabolism, thermogenesis, mood, and even GI motility. So it shouldn't be surprising that hypothyroidism results in many of those processes being slowed down. Perhaps the most common presenting symptom of hypothyroidism is fatigue represented by this super tired patient in her hospital bed. Additionally, many patients with hypothyroidism experience weight gain, usually in the range of 10 to 30 pounds due to slowing of their basal metabolic rate. Ooh, watch out for that falling cup of ice. It represents cold intolerance, which is a classic symptom. Cold intolerance in patients with hypothyroidism is caused by decreased thermogenesis. Hypothyroidism also results in decreased GI motility, making constipation a common complaint. Hence our recurring sketchy symbol for constipation, the plunger in this patient's bathroom. See that eerie brain-shaped hairnet on her head? Aside from being the latest in hospital fashion, it also represents cognitive impairment, a common feature of hypothyroidism. Cognitive impairment in hypothyroidism typically manifests as slow mentation, decreased concentration, or poor working memory, and can be more apparent in elderly patients. Therefore, when an elderly patient presents with cognitive impairment, make sure to rule out hypothyroidism before you call it dementia. Remember, unlike dementia, cognitive impairment rarely occurs in isolation in patients with hypothyroidism. Along those same lines, make sure to check for hypothyroidism in patients who present with depressive symptoms. Depressed mood in hypothyroidism, represented by that sad face circle on the wall, is reversible if the underlying hypothyroidism is treated, making it an important condition to rule out before a diagnosis of major depressive disorder is made. We're not done yet. Break out the lotion and leave-in conditioner. Because while they may not be their chief concerns, patients with hypothyroidism often complain of dry, rough skin and coarse, brittle hair. These changes occur as a result of the accumulation of matrix glycosaminoglycans in the interstitial spaces of skin and hair. And those wrist braces she's wearing? They're here to remind you that hypothyroidism is commonly associated with bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome and hypothyroidism is believed to be due to mucin deposition within the carpal tunnel, increasing pressure on the median nerve and leading to the classic symptoms of numbness, 
tingling, and pain in the first three fingers and half of the fourth finger. It's not just the nerves that can be messed up. Muscle involvement, also known as hypothyroid myopathy, is also common in adults with hypothyroidism. Hypothyroid myopathy typically manifests as progressive symmetric proximal muscle pain and weakness, represented by this patient's weak arm laboring to use her TV remote. The struggle is real. And last but not least, see those red spots on her bedsheet? They represent abnormal menstruation. Women with hypothyroidism can have a wide variety of menstrual abnormalities, ranging from oligo or amenorrhea to menorrhagia. These menstrual changes result in decreased fertility. Now, when your patient has primary hypothyroidism, you should only expect symptoms related to impaired thyroid function, like the ones we just reviewed. In central hypothyroidism, however, other symptoms of hypopituitarism are often seen as well. These can include hypogonadism and adrenal insufficiency, which we'll cover in separate sketches later on in this unit.